when I got saved, I saw a man, you know, and I understand it all now, but then it was just, just new to me, and he said, there's a man over here and you've got this wrong with you. And he said, God is speaking to me. And I was just stunned. You know, I, I didn't know the gospel. I didn't know anything. I was just a bush kid, scrubby kid from out back. And uh, uh, I saw him, and he was saying, God is speaking to me. Then he prayed for them, and the power of God fell, and they got healed. And it happened again and again and again. And some of them were my friends who didn't believe. But they were getting healed by God. But what really got me was that he said, God is speaking to me. And I thought that's amazing that the creator of heaven and earth God Almighty would speak this to us. That just stunned me. And from that day forward, I've had this desire to be able to hear God, to be able to know what God speaks and, and what he says. And so I gave my life to Christ and it was like a light turned on. The grass was greener, the sky was bluer. God just did something incredible inside of me. And I knew it, I wasn't just being convinced. I wasn't just being convinced about something. That because I'd seen the power of God. I'd seen miracles. I'd seen somebody hear from God about people that he didn't know. And I thought, I want to be able to hear God. So I want to speak this morning about how do we hear God? How does God speak? You know, it, it, it's so very, very powerful. Jesus is our example. You know, when Jesus came and he lived on the earth, he was born of God, came from God, he is God, uh, he is the Son of God, but he did not live out of that divine capacity. He came as a man. He was born as a man and he lived out of that place. He was filled with the Spirit and operated in the power of the Spirit, but he lived as a man, tempted in all points like you and I. I'll give you a verse to prove it. John chapter 5, verse 19 says this, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. Jesus said, I do what the Father shows me. Who wants to live like that? I want to do what God shows me. I want to live by what God, the Father shows me. And so, so God speaks in numbers of ways. But we've got to understand that God is a spirit. John 4, verse uh, 23 to 24, Jesus was speaking to a, 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 a woman at the well and he said, you know, you don't know what you're worshipping. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. Now I want to take some of the mystical out of this because people can get all mystical when you talk about the spirit. God is, some things about God are a mystery, but they're not mystical. It's not all, ooh, you know. God wants us to be able to relate to him. It's a relationship that we have. When we are born again, when we invite Christ into our hearts, we're born of the spirit. We're born spirit beings. We, have a, we are spirit. God is a spirit. And so spirit to spirit, we can relate to him. But how do we hear the voice of God? When God speaks. And God speaks in multiple ways. And when I tell you, when God wants to say something to you, you can't miss it. He'll get it to you. So we want to look at some of those ways that God speaks and, he, and he, how he imparts life to us when he speaks. You know, the Bible says that uh, man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4, verse 4, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He wants us to live. In other words, he imparts his spiritual life to us when he speaks. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God fed them with something that they had to pick up every day. It's called manna, which means, what is it? I don't know. You had to pick it up every day. If they kept it for an extra day, it went off. And it's a little bit like that with God. He wants us to hear him every day afresh. It's a fresh relationship. It doesn't, we don't want it to get stale. It's not something we want to just be, you know, I heard from God 20 years ago. No, every day he wants to meet with us. He wants to connect with us, spirit to spirit. And, and they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you want to get real with God, fake won't cut it. Religiosity won't cut it. Just going through the format won't do it when you're talking with God. It won't get you into the presence. You've got to be real. You've got to be what we call fair dinkum. You, you've got to be real with God. It's got to come out of a, a, a reality. You know, how can I say this? You can't put on 
uh, men, you can't put on a dress with your collar back to front and expect that's going to get you to God. Doesn't do it. It's a heart thing. It's a spirit thing. It comes out of here. Reality of desire and hunger, wanting to connect with God, and God will speak. They that draw near to him, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So out of that place of hunger, we draw near into the presence of God, and God speaks. So it's, it's not, well, you're hearing my voice now. Got a microphone. If you don't hear it, we'll turn you up. You know, uh, you can hear my voice. But this voice of God comes in many ways. When God speaks, his presence is also his voice. He is the word made flesh. His presence comes. In his presence is the fullness of joy. I touched with it this morning. The joy of God. It's also his voice. It's also how he speaks. It's that sense of knowing him. Sense of connecting with God. Sense of being in that place that just, oh, God is just so lovely. Wrap myself in his presence and the joy of God comes and the life of God comes. There are so many different aspects of who God is. Sometimes, you know, when I was a young man and I just newly saved and I was a bit of a, how can I say it, a um, bit rough around the edges, <laughs> a lot of the things that God said to me weren't all the nice, lovey, you know, you're my wonderful, they were straighten up, boy, <laughs> bringing conviction. And God was a father. God is a good father. And he, the Bible says in Hebrews, that he chastens the sons whom he loves. He disciplines them. And I found that I was on the receiving end of some of God's discipline. But the Bible says, you know, don't knock the discipline of God. Don't push it aside. For what son is without discipline? And I wanted to be a good son. So I embraced the discipline. I embraced that which God came and corrected me with. And sometimes I just, the conviction, I felt so, oh God, I've done the wrong thing. Please forgive me. And the conviction would remain upon me for so long until God did something on the inside of me. That was the voice of God as much as anything. But you're hearing me today. Come on, we've got to work with God and learn how to allow him to come and bring and do what he wants to do. So God would speak. <laughs> Romans 10, 17 says, by, uh, <coughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is an impartation that comes when God speaks to us, an impartation of faith, an impartation of believing. For those that come to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's so important that we be diligent in our relationship with God, that we step closer and be diligent in daily practices. Sometimes it's just the daily thing. Reading your Bible daily. God will speak to you through his Bible, for he is the word made flesh. And if you don't read the Bible, then sometimes God has found other ways he's got to speak to you. But the Bible is there for us to be able to hear the voice of God and hear God speaking to us. And when we read the Bible, and God will, can speak to us through that. Sometimes I'm, I'm lying half asleep at night, and our scriptures will begin to flow through me. The Bible says the role of the Holy Spirit is to remind us of his... You know, he'll bring things to our remembrance, it says. And so he will remind me of scripture verses. They'll just begin to flow and they'll go from one to another to another and I'll get all this theme. And God is speaking to me in that place. And sometimes, you know, it'll be just be the, the word of God. It'll flow like a river through me. So many scriptures, they just flow coming out, coming out. God will speak in that place. because. But if I didn't read the Bible, he couldn't remind me of them. So it's so important that we read the Word of God. Are you hearing me today? Come on, I'm just going over some basic foundations and we'll get into some meaty stuff. That's the, it's how we hear God. It's, it's not always the loud voice from heaven. In fact, I've never had a loud voice from heaven. Never. But I know God is speaking to me consistently and regularly. He wants to speak to you and he wants to speak to me. The Bible says, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. It's a relationship that we have. You know, when we come and pray and we pray to God, you know, God doesn't answer everything immediately. Sometimes he doesn't answer. Sometimes he doesn't just jump in and, and give the answer that we want. But God doesn't want selfish brats who just get everything they want. No, it's about a relationship. 
Neither does he want robots who just do what he says and we have no choice. It's not about that either. It's about relationship, about spending time with the Father, getting to know who he is, getting to know what his desires are. Jesus said, not my will, but your will, Father. It's about knowing the heart's desire of God and being a son who will do what God wants, knowing that this is what God wants. Are you hearing this? Just going over some, some real foundations this morning. <laughs> Here's another way that, that Jesus imparts to us. Listen to this. John 4, verse 48. Sometimes people have taken this in the negative way. Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you'll by no means believe. But that is not a negative. Some people have read that in this, in this way. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. But that's not a rebuke. It's not consistent with the rest of Scripture. Jesus said, if you don't believe my words, then believe my works. Let's look at this one. You don't sound convinced. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 5. My preaching and my teaching were not in words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and in power, so that your faith might be in the power of God. And God imparts faith when we see the miracles. He imparts to us. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So it, the, the miracles are part of God speaking. When I was a Christian, I saw the miracle power of God. Some people, you know, uh, we go and we try and convince people to become Christian. But friends, there's something powerful about seeing the power of God, having a testimony to the power of God. We talked about that this morning. <laughs> Are you with me? Here's another way that Jesus looked to hear what the Father was saying. He looked for faith in people. One of the ways that, that he heard the Father was he would spend time in prayer and God would show him what he's gonna, what's going to happen. But that wasn't every time. One of the examples was right in the beginning of, of John chapter 1 when he came to a man called Nathaniel and he was under the fig tree. And he said to Nathaniel, Before, when, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel goes, wow, you must be the son of God. And Jesus was amazed. Just because I said that, you believe? You'll see greater things than this to give you faith, to impart faith. God wants to impart faith to us, to be able to hear his voice and have an impartation of that divine power. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 24 to 28, Jesus came across a Canaanite woman. And this woman was not an Israelite. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but if I get something like this from God, it would upset me a little bit. <laughs> this woman was upset because she said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. This next verse, he didn't answer anything. Just went quiet. His disciples got annoyed with her and said, Send her away. She keeps annoying us. Next verse. He said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Next one. Then she said, Lord, help me. She was persistent. He answered, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. You think that's harsh? That's pretty harsh. Jesus said to me, I think, Jesus, you're being harsh. You're being a bit harsh. But here I was, see, he was looking for his assignment and his purpose, he wasn't looking outside of that. This is my assignment. But yet he saw something of God on this lady. She persisted. The next verse says, <laughs> Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then she got this incredible response from Jesus. I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. She saw faith. Jesus saw faith on her. He saw faith. And he prayed and said, go your way, your daughter is made whole. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I prayed for a couple. I won't mention their names because of what they do. Uh, they, they work in a, a communist country and support a lot of pastors and do incredible work in this communist country. 
because it's a communist country, they'll, they'll stop, you know, if they're ministering in a church, they'll stop the recording so it doesn't get recorded and go back to the communists and shut them down, put them in jail, all sorts of things. They put themselves on the line. And uh, uh, I prayed for this couple. They were in my church and I asked if I could bless them and pray for them. So, and, uh, you know, the, the husband was an Australian businessman and he was the one always speaking when we'd, he'd come around the churches. He had his little Vietnamese wife and uh, she never said much because she was, you know, didn't have great English. I prayed for him and that was good and blessed him. Then I prayed for this little lady and I tell you, I have never seen such an ocean of faith on a person. She had faith that was so deep it was bottomless. All things were possible when you believe. She had faith. I've never sensed anything like it before or since. Just this incredible depth of faith and just trust in God that she knew that God would work. Incredible. And they see amazing, amazing things happen in their work in that communist country. Jesus saw faith on the Canaanite woman. He saw it and said, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. So Jesus said, I'll only do what the Father shows me. But it wasn't just you know, what he'd show him in the prayer time and his whole day was mapped out, but he was looking for where God was working. And you and I should be looking for where God is working. Where is God working? Who is he speaking to? What is he doing now? Where It's a day-by-day, moment-by-moment walk and relationship with God. Are you hearing this? Bible says in Romans chapter 8, to be led by the Spirit, those who are led by the Spirit shall be called the sons of God. So we've got to learn to be led by what God is saying. Learn to watch where is he moving, what is he doing. Here's another verse to, to give this example. This is how Jesus operated. In, in Matthew chapter 16, he was asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? Who do you think I am? And of course, Uh, Simon, who eventually became Peter, said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he got this incredible response from Jesus. You are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, for you, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. You've received some revelation from God. You've heard from God. You've got something from God has imparted into you to know this truth, to will hearing the voice of God. God is a spirit. It's not just spoken words. There's an impartation in hearing the life of the spirit, in hearing what God wants. Are you hearing me this morning? Sometimes when I hear God, it's not by words. It's not just, you know, it's like I just get this sense of knowing. Jesus is the prince of peace. Let me put it like this. He's the prince of peace. So when we pray and we come into his presence, we sense Peace. There's peace in his presence because he is the Prince of Peace. That's God speaking. It's his presence. Is this making sense to you this morning? There, yes, no. Some of you are looking a bit confused. It's, it's knowing his presence. It's knowing what he is doing. It's knowing how he wants to work. Becoming familiar and close to God. Connecting with him spirit to spirit. Jesus looked for what God was doing. He looked for the power. I want to give a testimony. I said I'd uh, bring a testimony. I'll tell you about my son, my eldest son. When my first wife was heavily pregnant with my eldest son, she was standing at the back door and had a few little steps down to the ground, and she was physically pushed off the back step to try and take our son. Had a few other spiritual encounters that I won't go into. But, uh, you know, when he was born, he, he had leaking spinal fluid, spina bifida. And, uh, but because I knew and had seen the power of God and had faith for miracles, I brought him into the church. We prayed for him. We had an appointment with a specialist. So we packed up our things, drove him down to Sydney to see this specialist in his big hospital down in Sydney. And the specialist looked at him and got angry with us. He said, there's nothing wrong with this baby. Why are you wasting my time? I was very pleased he got angry. So we took him back. A beautiful, beautiful boy. My eldest son. 
three, four years ago, he died. His wife uh, had two little kids living up, they're living in Croy, and uh, going to Noosa Church, and leadership there. And uh, his wife just woke up for some reason. She normally just goes straight to sleep, sleeps all night. But she woke up about 11 o'clock at night. This is on, I think, the 28th of December a few years ago. And uh, my son had stopped breathing. So she started doing CPR on him, breathing into him. She called the ambulance. The ambulance got there within 15 minutes, I think. They worked on him for 40 minutes. Took him off to the hospital. The next day, he had died, but she saved him. The next day, you know, he woke up and he, he said to his wife, why am I here? And she said, your heart stopped. And so he prayed and asked God for a new heart. And they began, you know, doing all the tests on him to find out what had, what had gone on. The doctors actually did so many tests on him. One of the tests that they did was they stopped his heart and started it again to see if they could find something. So he, technically he died twice. And to this day, they do not know what caused it. It's a walking miracle. So just to take, you know, make precautions, they installed a pacemaker, not a pacemaker, a defibrillator, a big metal plate in his chest. That in, just in case his heart stops again, it'll kick in and give him a kick start. A couple of uh, years ago, Bailey Sparks was praying for us and she gave us a nice prophetic word, which is nice. Then she started describing my son. You've got a son who does this, this and this and this. And said, yeah, that's my son. And she said he's got a great call of God on his life. The enemy tried to take him out, but God overcomes. But if, you know, and, and we prayed and cut the, the strategies of devils off his life, we break that thing in Jesus' name. Stood in faith and God gave him a whole new heart. They couldn't even find what was wrong. Powerful testimony. Still serving God today. There's more to come from that boy. But you see, if we hadn't have seen the faith, the power of God and the miracle working of God, we wouldn't have had faith to believe. There is something that imparts from heaven when you hear God. There is, there is power from God, the life of the Spirit. See, it's not, by it's not by fancy words trying to convince people. There's got to come demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Are you hearing me? There's got to. There's got to be demonstration. In the early church, it went from two and a half thousand, no, 250 very early on, to the space of a few decades later, 25 million Christians. And that's without a New Testament. How did that happen? It's because they were walking in testimony of what God had did and in the power of the Spirit. See, God can do it again. He's the same God. He hasn't changed. He hasn't, you know, given up. He hasn't shuffled off. He hasn't said, oh, I'm not going to do it anymore. And those people that choose to believe that, guess what happens? No power, no growth, no life, no victory, no overcoming. And their people die because they, you know, just roll over. I've heard some people say, you know, when you stand up, you know, you, you, you cop some spiritual opposition. Well, here's my answer to that. If you're playing, it, it's, it's a bit like a woman who is heavily pregnant saying, I'm not going to give birth, I've had enough of this pregnancy. It, it's a bit like a, 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 you know, a sporting teams. One team says, I'm just going to stand back here at the goal line and let the others do whatever they want because I don't want to play. And you just get rolled. You, you don't get a choice with some of these things. We've got to stand up. Are you hearing me today? We've got to allow the victory of Christ to walk through us and stand against the thing. The Bible says the, the trials of the righteous are many, but God has given us the victory. You and I have the victory. You and I have it. It's already been given to us. See, we've got to understand that, that you know, we're not down here with the devil. The devil is down here with us. The devil is down here with you. You have the victory. You are an overcomer. 
the same God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. You are the overcomer. You are the representative of Christ. You are his ambassadors. You are. You are, Pat. You are. And Jesus, heal me in Jesus' name. Right. Release your anointing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, <laughs> you can't just stand on the back foot and, and expect, you know, nothing's going to hit me. Nothing's going to happen. It's all going to be easy. You're a victor. But it comes from knowing Jesus, getting revelation of Christ. <laughs> Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Spend time in his presence. Learn to hear his voice. Learn to know him. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the Spirit of God witnesses with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And we get a witness. How do we know that we're hearing from God? There comes a witness. There comes a, a sense that God is speaking. Or something that's in the inside that says, this is God. Hello? See, some people look for the signs. I want a sign. You know, and, and God can do signs. But <clears throat> if you're always led by a signs, we end up like a, being like a yo-yo, up and down. Like this, there's a sign for this, a sign for that, a sign for something else. But God wants us to be rocks that hold fast onto his word, immovable by circumstances around about us. Yo-yo is a child's toy. We've got to mature. He wants us to go on to meat, not just milk. <laughs> Anybody want the meat of the word of God? Who wants more revelation from God? Anybody? Let's have a look at how to get it, eh? <laughs> Let's have a look at this. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. 1 Peter. I hope you're getting something from this. 1 Peter, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Desire pure milk. But God wants us to grow beyond spiritual babies. Any mature people that are still a baby? <laughs> well, don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3. I want the meat. First Corinthians chapter 3. Come on, chapter 3. Who's moved chapter 3? <laughs> I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. Here's how he describes babies. For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions amongst you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So if, if we're spiritual babies, we've still got strife going on in our, in our relationships. We've still got unforgiveness flowing. You know, when you remember somebody that's hurt you, anybody remember something like that? Somebody said something or did something and just offended you and hurt you? Nobody. Everybody's more mature than me here. <laughs> Instant maturity comes upon everybody. <laughs> when you remember something like that, what do you do with it? Well, you've got to forgive. If you allow that to grow into your heart, you just go carnal again. It's just natural. We've got to be spiritual and deal with it. Yeah, let it go. Forgive. Don't remember it. Don't allow the hurt to grow into a root of bitterness. Yeah, it's gone quiet in here. If we're going to be maturity and go on to want meat of the word of God and get fresh revelation of what God is speaking, then we've got to deal with the natural. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. Put it away. Put it aside. Put it out. Go into maturity. Are you hearing this? Let's give another verse about meat, eh? You want some fresh revelation from God? Well, you've got to do what's required to be spiritually mature. Hebrews. Hebrews 5. This one defines it really, really well. Where's Hebrews gone? While I'm in Hebrews. Hebrews 5. <laughs> 
verse 12 to 14. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Listen to this, verse 14. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That means spiritually, not naturally. That is, those who by reason of use, by practice, have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. So if you want a fresh revelation of maturity, you've got to practice discerning what is right before God, what isn't. What is truth, what is, what is not. What is good, what is evil. You've got to discern. We need some discernment. We need discernment now more than ever. We need mature people. God is looking for you to be mature, to grow up spiritually. How do you get fresh revelation from God? Well, firstly, you've got to deal with your carnality. Otherwise, you're just doing a yo-yo life. Some people are running around looking for the latest sign, the latest thing. You know, let's go to the latest church. Let's go to the church down the road that's just starting because they'll have something fresh. Let's go here, let's go there. But strong, fresh revelation comes from God. Hello? Hello? <laughs> sometimes you know I've seen such immaturity you know we pray for people and if they don't get healed I've heard people say well yeah you don't have enough faith and people just brings condemnation but that's not the answer from God people go on all introspective or oh, do I need more faith do I need more faith but the Bible says faith comes from Jesus uh, for faith he is the author of faith looking unto Jesus, who was the author and perfecter of our faith. That's where we find it. We look to him. He's the one who imparts. He's the one who speaks. That's how we grow. We look to Jesus. We look on who he is. We look at his nature, his character, pressing into him, diligently seeking him. I know I'm just touching on a few things today. You know, prophetic people can get condemned because they go to a place and they pick up the spirit that's there and it speaks to them and they, they think it's them. We've got to learn to discern what is us, what isn't. What is the spirit that's here? What isn't? How do we sense this spirit world? I'm into teaching mode here a little bit. But I want you to, 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 to grasp this truth. If we're going to make a difference, we've got to know how to make a difference. We've got to come into the spirit world and change it. We've got to come into the spirit that's in our homes and bring the life of God into it. We've got to bring the power of God into our workplace. We've got to bring reconciliation, for God has made us the ministers of reconciliation. We've got to bring the life of, of God over our families and over our workplaces, in our homes, into our, our business places. We have a, a, the a power of God to make a difference and influence this world for Christ. Friends, we've got to have a bigger vision than just look after me, God. Hello? Come on, this is what this is about. It's about hearing God in my home, in my life, every day, moment by moment. Where am I working? Where's my, in my, in my nursing home? To bring God into that place. We've got to step up and serve and be people who bring the power and the presence of God wherever we are. Where are Bob and Kay this morning? Where do you think they are? You'd think they'd just retire and give up, wouldn't you? Hey! <laughs> Never give up. But no, they're out serving God. They picked up their, their heels and gone out serving God with care outreach, filling their, their gift and their purpose, pastoring people out in the, in the rural properties. Out serving God. If we're going to serve God, we've got to step up. Don't step back. We're not ones who pull back. We're ones who step up to the plate and have a go. If you don't know what to do, come and see us. We'll help you. <laughs> we'll help you. God can speak in many ways. Peter was convicted by a rooster. He was. You don't know the story? When, when Jesus was going to the cross, Jesus, Peter said, I'll never forsake you. And Jesus said, you'll forsake me three times before the rooster crowed. When the rooster crowed, he was convicted. God got him. God spoke through a donkey once. 
See, I am not my gift. To get, to get deeper, we've got to know who we are in Christ. I am not my gift. I don't particularly like being called Pastor Tom, Pastor Neil, Apostle Neil. Do you like it, Neil? No. Why? Because it does, it's not our identity. If you get your identity from what you do and how you serve God, then your relationship with God can become on works, which is unhealthy. It's not about works. It's about knowing who I am in Christ. Christ in me is the hope of glory. I am God's favourite. Why? Because Christ is in me. And Christ is his favourite. My identity is in him. I'm a child of God, period. It's not about what I do. It's about Christ in me is the hope of glory. Is this touching something this morning? So if you want to go on to maturity, you've got to come from a place of identity. When I lay hands on the sick, God is laying hands on the sick because Christ is in me. Christ is touching them. Are you hearing this? Come on, this is, you want some meat? I'm trying to give some to you. <laughs> Chew on the bones. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Bit tough, she said. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Rabo kolobohu ishti. Ye kalabahai turi erba ruburete. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Phil, Christ is in you. And Christ in you wants to push out all that other junk. Wants to push out every disease and every all the stuff. Pushing it out. Push it out of his body right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit of God. There are some people who are still feel condemned by what they've done. We've gone through it so many times this morning that the blood of Jesus washes. It cleanses us. But yet there are still people who feel, who I, I, I can just sense that there are some people here and you wrestle with who you are. You wrestle with your identity. You wrestle with knowing who you are in Christ. You've got this thing going around on the inside of you thinking, I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't done, friends, it's not according to works. God wants to break that this morning. Meat comes. Meat comes from diligently seeking him. Deal with that lie. Just throw it off. Throw it off. Let me agree with and pray with you. Uh, friends, if you've never given your life to Christ, I'd love to just pray with you and you can receive Jesus today. He'll come in and make an incredible difference in your world. We heard from a young man yesterday how God just totally delivered him from such condemnation about the journey that he'd been on. It set him free. Incredibly powerful testimony. <laughs> we each have a testimony when Jesus comes in. If you've never received Christ, just give me a wave of your hand and say, yeah, I want to do that. I want to receive Jesus. Love to pray with you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you're wrestling with condemnation, if you're wrestling with your identity, I'd love to agree with you and pray with you and allow God just to come and touch you and help you so much. Because he will. He's helped me incredibly. I've got a whole other testimony about that. <laughs> By the power and life of his spirit. I know there are people here like that. Would you please come? Come on, don't be embarrassed. God wants to help you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Good on you, sweet. There are some others here. You're wrestling with it. You wrestle with your identity. You wrestle with it. You wrestle with it. Who are those people? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on. Let me pray with you this morning. Let me, let me just release the presence of God over you to love on you and help you. He loves you so much. Good on you, sweetie. Come on. Come on, come in. Come on, just stand here. Stand, stand here. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Everybody loves you here. Nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to look down on you for responding to God. God loves us. Kidney pain. Kidney. Stones in the kidney. Stones. There's kidney stones. Spirit of God. Who here has problem with kidney pain? Write that back down. There's a couple of you. Come, let me let me believe God. Thank you, Jesus. 
your head about rubber red tarabosh stodo galaboish spirit of god <laughs> demonstration of the spirit and in power we got faith in god to do miracles haven't we hello are you with me this morning who's got faith for a miracle thank you jesus spirit of god just agree with me church it's god that does this not me but the power of god comes it's the power of God. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. In Jesus' name. Hey. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you and honor you today for your presence, for your presence. Father, if you want some meat from God, let's just ask God right now. God, I ask you for fresh meat, fresh revelation, the fresh truth, the fresh life that bring it from heaven. Come on, agree with me. Lift your hands to God. Father, let fresh, the freshness, speak to us afresh. Speak to us afresh. Speak to us afresh. Speak to us afresh. God, speak afresh. Let it be fresh to us today. Let it be fresh. Speak afresh, Holy Ghost. You have not because you ask not, the Lord says. Ask him. He'll show you things. He'll speak to you. He'll impart fresh truths. And when those thoughts come, when the scriptures come, allow them to flow through you. Embrace them. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the freshness of heaven. Let it flow afresh from heaven, fresh revelation. The spirit of revelation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.